Today we're making paper carnations. Hi, and welcome to my craft room. My name is Kelsey, I also call myself Dinosaur Mama, and today we are making paper carnations. If you didn't know, a carnation is the flower of January, and this year, 2024, I'm going to be bringing you a free paper flower template every single month to match the flower of the month. So we're gonna go step by step on how to set this up in design space, as well as the assembly, and it's a very easy flower to put together. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I bring you new free craft projects every single week, as well as different tips and tricks while you're crafting. Let's get started. So I actually made this on both of my machines, meaning my Cricut as well as my Silhouette Portrait. So you can use whatever machine you want to cut these out. It is in an SVG format. So if you do have a Silhouette and you're using Silhouette Studio, you will have to have the um, business edition where you can add in the SVG files or the paid version, not the free version of Silhouette Studio. So for sizing, you can kind of decide this on your own, um, but each flower when you upload the SVG, on my computer at least, sometimes they get wonky between downloads, um, is a little bit under three inches. So I actually ended up sizing this up just a little bit. I ended up making it, I think about nine. That way each carnation is about three inches wide. Now, you're gonna lose a little bit of the width on that, but not a lot. So you can really kind of use this as a guide. If you're cutting out these petals at 2.85, your flower is gonna be about that wide. The ones on my silhouette, I made over three inches and they are they were a, a decent sized flower. Carnations, I don't even think are that big. So you could even go closer to the 2.85. But when you go to make these, each flower is going to have 11 petals. Um, you can move them, right, onto one sheet. They should fit if you have 12 by 12 cardstock. Um, so I leave it up to you on sizing, on color, and on what type of cardstock you use. I had to just re install everything on my computer. So all of my stuff is back to factory settings. So. It's been a little bit of a hectic 24 hours, but everything is in. You can cut again. You can change any colors. If you go to make it and you want to do more than one project, I just did everything here to up the amount and I moved everything onto a certain amount of sheets. So Silhouette Studio is going to be very similar in terms of how you add things. So you're going to go file. I go to open and I am going to add in my Carnation SVG. And here it is. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you change any of your sizes. So for this, it'll depend obviously on what kind of card you're using. I changed mine to eight and a half by 11, and then I just moved around my SVG file, just like you would on a Cricut machine. So for this one, you might not be able to fit as many, and again, if you wanna resize it, you definitely can. Make sure you resize all of them. Another thing that you can do in Silhouette Studio is actually um, just grab like two and resize or even three and resize and then go over to the duplicate panel and just hit fill page and it will do it for you. So then of course you can move these around and if you wanted to add more, you could. And then when you go over to send, I typically use the cardstock, the textured heavy, and I actually up it one. I've just found that it, it works the best. And then you just do cut and that's it and send it over to your machine. So let's get started on our assembly. So the first step that I'm doing is completely optional. So I'm gonna go through it pretty fast. I put some acrylic paint onto the center of my carnations. Now you see I have six up above where I am making the current one. And I tried all different kinds. Carnations have so many different variations. So you can really make these however you want. After I had done the paint, I remembered I had some alcohol inks I could have used as well for the edges, but it's totally up to you. You could do the centers, you can do the edges, you can leave them just regular with plain cardstock. Um, you could add gold fringes to it, 
really do this however you want to. So the main thing here is you just want to be consistent with all the layers when it comes to either doing your centers or your edges and make sure that your paint dries. I got red paint all over um, my white tabletop and I was so worried it wouldn't come off, but luckily it did. So you can do this however you want with your different variations. Again, just allow your paint to dry. You probably noticed that I did this on my Cricut mat. And I did that because I wanted to be able to remove this and like make it pretty easy. You can of course remove your petals beforehand and then paint, just put something underneath them. That's totally fine. But by doing it on the paper while it's still whole and then removing it, it was just easier for me. So remove all of your petals. You can stack them up. They are all the same size. So you don't need to worry about any certain order with any of these. And we can get started with our shaping and our assembly. So for the shaping of these flowers, you can do stacks of like three or four, or you can do them individually. I don't suggest doing them all at once just because it will get really thick and then some will be a little bit more curved than others, which is fine for this kind of flower, but I just suggest doing them in smaller groups. And I'm using a ball roller, but you can use your fingers to shape these, or you can use um, like a dowel, or you can use like a pen, you can use a paintbrush, the end of a paintbrush. You just want something kind of rounded to shape the petals and we're going to shape them every other one. So the first one you're gonna to shape towards you and then we're gonna skip one, leave it flat for, for now. And then we're gonna do the next one the same way. So I'm just shaping these into a curved C, mostly towards the top of the petal so where it kind of bulbs out and I am making them pretty curved. I want them to have a nice curve to them. And so again, I'm doing four that are facing me, and then we are gonna go back and flip it over, and now we're gonna have them facing us again, but they're gonna be the opposite way. So you're gonna do four facing up and four facing down. So they are opposite. So I have my one curve here, and then one curve the opposite way. And so this is going to give us a nice full look and those petals are going to um, weave into each other. So you're going to do this for all of the petals. And so I forgot to actually record all of them, but luckily I don't think you need to see all 11 of them shaped. And so now we are going to start assembling. You can use craft glue for this. I went with hot glue. I, I just tend to go to hot glue for my flowers and all of the materials and tools will be listed in the blog post in the description below. I forgot to mention that before. That's also where you can grab the free SVG file. So we have our first layers and I made these obviously a few times. And so this is how I found to get the most full flower. You're going to start with two layers at a time and you're going to place them opposite so that they are filled in all the spaces. And obviously you're gonna have ones that are facing up next to each other, some facing down next to each other. Don't worry about that because as we get to the center, it's gonna start to look more and more full. So start with four groups of two. Don't stack them just yet. Just start with four groups of two. So those two that I just placed on top of each other are not glued together. It's two layers of petals and then two layers of petals. We're gonna do this four times. Again, I just, I found that this gives you the most full flower because you're able to really get nice layers. So start with your groups of two. Again, four groups of two, and then you'll have three individuals off to the side. Now with those layers we just created, we're going to grab two of them and we're going to try to line up opposites. So see how one is curved towards me, one is curved away. I want those to line up with each other when I glue them down. That way you get a lot of volume between the two petals. And we're gonna do that the best we can with all four of those layers we just created. So you want to try to keep as much opposite going as you can. Obviously you might have some petals that fall into each other, but I think that that's gonna give you a nice natural look of a flower. And I wanted to make these as close to realistic as I possibly could. And you know, as I go on further throughout the year, the flowers are going to get more and more detailed and harder to make. And I'm excited because it's a good challenge for me.
So you will stack up the four that we just created and you'll see you can fluff it up with your hands a little bit. And now we're going to add in our last three layers to our center. And we're gonna keep going with that opposite kind of theme, but these we're going to scrunch in first. So you'll see I'm going to kind of claw them to make them into more of a center and add in my glue. And then I'm just going to find one petal that's already in the stack that we built. And I'm going to try to get one of those petals to line up and be opposite. Because if one lines up, you're gonna have other ones line up as well. And you're gonna do this three times in the center and this is gonna give you a nice full center. And of course, the more you squish it up in the center, the more full it's gonna look. If you feel like your carnation needs more fullness in the center, by all means, cut more petal layers totally up to you. You can always duplicate in Design Space or in Silhouette Studio to make as many layers as you want. I felt like 11 was a good amount and it was nice and full for me, but if you feel like you need more, then so be it. So again, you can grab this free SVG file in the blog post below. It is an instant download and there will also be written step-by-step -step instructions as well as all of the materials and tools that I had. And on my website, you will find over 800 free SVG files for download. So here is our finished carnation. Thank you so much for joining me in today's tutorial on the paper carnations. I hope you enjoyed it. During the tutorial, I hope that you saw also that there were different variations and that you can really make these unique just like carnations are in real life. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe so I can continue to bring you new projects every week. If you learned something today, please give this a thumbs up. It helps me so much. And share it with one of your crafty friends if you think they'd like to make some paper carnations. I'll catch you during the next craft and stay crafty.